ball's going to be incomplete. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. One receiver left, three to the right. On third down, Winston. To Shepard, complete over the middle. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. They'll throw again. Winston. Oh, and it's incomplete. That would have been big in the end zone if he could have held on. Instead, it's second down. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans from four yards out. And the Bucs are able to make this a close game again. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Offense looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten. Brady to throw on second down. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. The reception good for seven. It's third down. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to Talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. No, I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Brady now to throw. Over the middle, Julian Edelman, it's complete. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Let's see if they can convert here on third and three. Brady going to try and throw on third down. Got a man. It's Amendola. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Back now in Tampa. We get set for the fourth quarter. Patriots have the lead. They also have the football. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They come out here in the eye. Brady gives now the ball. Evades the tackler and now some space. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. And that's why defense coordinators always preach 11 guys to the ball. Because sometimes you have a missed tackle, but if you have a swarm of guys around, less room for them to roam even after the first missed tackle. In this case, the tackle was missed. Plenty of open field to get after that. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. 
And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Well, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Now Brady throwing on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran that one. Nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is, in the running back dropped it. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. Brady now on third and goal. Being chased out left. He may try and run for this. Give him two yards on that play, and that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to perhaps salt this one away. And Goskowski's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So a big one there is that gives them a little cushion. And you know, here in the fourth quarter, the fact that they were able to bleed some time off the clock and put points on the board, even if it's only three, that could turn out to be the drive that ultimately wins them the game. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five yards with a new rule as he's taken down right at the 20-yard line. And now the Buccaneers offense gets set to head back onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They come out here in the eye. In motion left, Shepard. A second down throw for Winston. And this is Shepard on the catch. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Russell Shepard, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Bucs have made this a one-score game. Pardon me, you know the real key is to stopping a good passing attack? You tell me. Being able to tackle as soon as a guy catches the football. Didn't work out there. No, because when you give up the big run after catch, the rack yardage, that puts your defense in a big time stressful position. A lot of rack yardage and a touchdown there on the big play. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And, it, and now the Bucs decided to take a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter.
So they're leading. They have possession of the football, and certainly this is where they just want to milk the clock. On second down, here's Brady. It's caught outright Amendola. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. Now a carry for Blunt. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Again, here's Blunt. And he'll get this across the 40 and up to about the 42-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. So third and medium here, third and five. Brady to throw. The throw left side complete to Hogan. Now the Buccaneers go ahead and take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here's Ryan Allen now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Fortunately, he was able to get it back, but it's left his guys in a bit of a hole here. They're backed up deep to start this drive. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. So you're right there, but obviously the clock is not your friend. How do you handle this situation? You're thinking two plays. One, to get yourself in position for the second one. Whether you're able to get into field goal range or you have to try another deep pass, another Hail Mary. But you're trying to get the first one to a receiver, get out of bounds, and give yourself a chance to set things up for an easier shot at it. We'll see if they can do it. Might be easier said than done. Back to throw. Over the middle to Evans. And he's brought down after a good game. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. They come out here in the eye. He'll look to throw. Deep drop. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he's across for the touchdown. And it's likely the game winner here in the closing stages. I think it'd be real easy here to focus on maybe a defensive breakdown with that type of a play in this situation. But let's give a little bit of credit here. That type of play is clutch. Boy, it was clutch, but to turn it back to the defense, how crushing is that? You think you've got this thing won, and in the last moments, almost literally, you lose it. Snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. 